All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode 20 something. I don't even remember the number you got that far of the Fresh Towels podcast live on tape in New York City here today with DJ PJ in the mix. Do you realize that we have multiple viral videos now online? Mul multiple. This I was unaware of. Well, maybe we only have one, but in my mind, it's on multiple platforms. So that counts as multiple viral videos. It went so the video it went viral on Facebook. It went viral on something it else. It went viral too. on Instagram and on TikTok. And our video was the most visited U.S. cities. I remember. And people just did not like that video. <laughs> I think that like if you have videos that people don't like, it's better. And so I'm like, now I'm trying to like just get do videos that just poke the bear a little bit. I like it. So are you, are you referring to the comments or, or what exactly? Comments, just people just talking shit on the videos. And the thing that's so funny about these top fives is they're not my list. People <laughs> comment and they're like, this is, you're full of shit. I'm like, I'm not full of shit. Yahoo's full of shit. <laughs> this is not me. I didn't do it. Mm -mm. But then they're like, oh yeah, your sources are way off. Well, what am to I supposed be to do? fair, <laughs> I think that video was funny because I think they do have a point because <laughs> you no, can't agree with I'm, them. I'm, this one, I agree. I even commented on like Instagram. Oh yeah, you did comment. You were like a troll on our own video. I, I, I couldn't help it. You were a troll well, in your own video. We said that Orlando is the most visited city in the U.S. It's it's not true from what I look. I looked it up afterwards. After the fact. I don't know where your sources are. It's but. so funny. I was remember I was looking at my Instagram. And I was reading this comment, and it was like, actually, I did some research, and this list isn't right. I'm like, who the fuck would say this? It was PJ. It was you. And it gets, like, hundreds of likes. I'm like, you're talking shit. You're supposed to defend me. Wait, what if that's the key? Just, like, make up false information so everyone gets hated, and we get millions of views. I feel like people think that that's what I do. Because didn't you say you had another video that was, like, that went, like, super viral, but, like, kind of in a, almost in a negative way? Or yes. you're, like, most... That was the top five most dangerous cities, which people did not like. They were calling me all sorts of names. Uh-oh. To like get this Trump supporter out of here, oh and then goodness. they're like, get this Biden supporter out of here. I'm like, what? I don't even know what I where, am anymore. Where are your, our sources coming from? I have to ask that. Well, people don't I'm like not... the sources. That one was according to Forbes. Okay, and Forbes is like, reliable, I think. But then people said Forbes isn't reliable, and I don't know. Listen, you know My when uncle I came, he knows this. He's sure that this people facts thought are right. that I was sitting in a dark basement, like you know what I'm going to do online. I'm going to do the top five most dangerous cities, and I'm like researching for 14 hours. That video came to. I was sitting in this chair, like God, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Do top five most dangerous cities, and then made the video in 35 seconds. Oh my goodness. That's how much I put thought into it. But anyway, we have gone, people now see us together and they're like, oh God, is that the top five guys? Mm -hmm. They don't do that. But in my mind, same. someone could. Same. Is that the most viewed video or, or, no, is, or is the five, dangerous one? Top five uh, most dangerous cities is, is the most viewed. The one that got people heated. Heated. Call me all sorts of names. How many views does that get? Like 20 million across well, all I, platforms. I'm sorry, what? 20 million. You got like 10 million on TikTok alone. You're just alone. reading a list from Yahoo like finance yes. page and you get 20 million views. Yes. And I got recognized at a show recently from that. A girl comes up to me at the show and goes, did you do that? Are you the top five guy? Wow. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. That's not me. Don't look at me. Um, yeah. But it's crazy how you do, you know, spend your whole life doing stuff. And then it's like, we, we just say that New York isn't the most visited city. And people are like, we need to watch. Well, this. I'm a little biased. I've been here for a while, like you have. So, you know, I got to represent. I just think New York is such a huge city that, like, there's no way that Orlando could be more visited. It, it is, though. It just is. I think more people pass through New York. Boo. Because of the airport. Fact check. We need a fact check here. <laughs> fact. You're just nixing me. <laughs> No, I'm fact checking my I'm own leaving. my own video that I was in. <laughs> yeah, you did fact check our, our own video, which is yeah. unprecedented. Yes, I I've gone across the, the entire <laughs> internet. No one has ever been Actually, like. Actually, you're wrong. Well, who's it? Oh, it's PJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's you talking shit on my account. Do yeah. it on your account. All right, fine, fine, fine. Um, but we were discussing different places that we could go this summer. You are a wide. You have a wide knowledge of international travel and relations. Yes. So you are a good resource. You should have been a travel agent. 
Well, funny story, I was. You were a travel agent. The last agent. time I had a desk job a while back, I was a travel consultant for Liberty Travel. You which... didn't consult shit. I was consulting what really did you hard. you consult? Okay, to be fair, I did not consult that hard. No one consulted. People came in, they're 199, like... There was 199, when I worked there, it, <laughs> I don't want to say how long ago, it was a long time ago, there was 199 stores. We were 199th in sales. <laughs> <laughs> Liberty <laughs> Travel in Chelsea the, on on Twenty uh, Sixth Street between Twenty Fourth and Twenty Fifth. You have the least sales in the entire company. So, Our store did yes. So that was that was you and your team. Yes, but I know my stuff. I just I wasn't. I don't think I was a pushy enough salesman. So I if like, I came in, if you want to, you know, that's you not what they wanted throat. to hear. You got to be cutthroat in sales. You don't think you were? You don't think you were Definitely cut out not. for sales? No, I'm like, oh, I knew all the destinations and like. But I'm just like, all right, so you want to do it? You can. I don't really care. <laughs> if you want to do it, you no, can. No, because there's like a sale. If you've ever worked in sales, there's like a process of like qualifying, getting objections, handling objections. I didn't do like any of that. Did you guys like, have any training? Brazil's cool. They, we did, yeah. One of the funniest. I'm too nice. I'm too nice. One of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen was you sleeping under the desk at Liberty Travel. It's hard work. <laughs> I'd be like, what do you do all day? And then it was like unrelated, but like 14 days later, it was you in the fetal position wearing corduroy pants and like your little Liberty Travel sweater is sleeping. It's still on Facebook. Sleeping under the table. But I'm not even like comfortable like with a pillow, like with like a semi smile on my face. I'm like, I looks like I was shot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, my legs are in an awkward position. I'm lying on my stomach. I needed a nap. Do, was there any places someone wanted to go where you would talk them out of it based on where it is? Do you think yeah. you could do that? Do you think you would talk someone out of a certain place For if they sure. had it in their mind? What would be a place that you would talk someone out of? Talk someone out of. If someone came in and they had their, they were thinking, I definitely want to go to this place, a place that you would de-recommend. Based off of them or based off of like maybe my personal it biases? Could be either. Or... Per let's go personal biases first. Is there There's a place in the world that someone comes in and you would say, don't go there? Don't go there. Um, hmm. Some place I, you know, no one's, everyone always asks people, what if, if you could go anywhere? Where would, no one's like, what do you, where do you just think where is Where do you think is terrible? terrible? You know where I could see you saying something like this? Just based on how like international you are. Mm. I could see you being a real Hawaiian hater. No, I love Hawaii. Have you been? I've been twice, but when I was a kid. Okay, so Hawaii would be an example of a place that I would think that you would tell people not to go because you're like, if you want the real Polynesian experience. <laughs> I'm not that big of a snob. But no. like, okay, so give me a place. Okay, I actually, I can give you one. I was just, well, I don't want to say that because our experience was a little skewed, but I was just in Tulum, and I thought I thought it was a little overrated. Tulum, okay. Um, it was extremely expensive. Like, Tulum? Mexico is a very big country, just like America. So when I was in Mexico City last year, it was amazing. I was staying in like a five-star hotel for hundred bucks a night. I think the city's cool, but we were in this like tourist zone where like drinks were literally like thirty or forty dollars each. What American? They were more. Expensive. How many pesos? Going is that? Like out, five thousand pesos it was like for a, a drink. Million pesos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was more expensive than New York. So if you go to Tulum, I would say go out more in the in the city. Um, it was just like I. I like to do the touristy stuff, then like try to mingle with the locals. But um, isn't that the isn't that the issue with people that people say of Tulum is that it's basically just New York and Mexico? Like even a lot of the restaurants from mm -hmm. New York are down there. It's the same people. If you've ever, I'm sure you have. If you've ever taken a flight to Cancun, which is like where the airport is, which is an hour or two away, you see there's like no mix. Everyone there has got their like, everyone there is from like Philadelphia and like outer New York area. I'm like, okay, we're not going to Mexico. No, you're getting a version of a tropical vacation. It's a Disney world of yeah. Mexico. Yeah. No, I love Hawaii because it is America, but it's Hawaii is so, so different. Beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. I love beaches. I'm a beach snob. So it's big Hawaii. I fan, think it's actually. the only state that was used to be a monarchy. Is that true? There was a monarchy in Hawaii. You're, test, you're testing me, and I, I know. Don't, I don't and I would anywhere. be the king. You are the king of Hawaii. 
the king. When we lived together, you like had Hawaiian themed birthday parties in our That's true. apartment. One of the one of the drunkest I've ever been was at my Hawaiian themed birthday party. And for you at home who are thinking, "Oh, what were you like 19?" I was 34. No, you're right. <laughs> I was like <laughs> deep into the 30s. Yes. Um I was like, "Let's do a Hawaiian themed birthday party." And like people came over and there's a picture of of comedian Tom Delgado was mm-hmm. who we love. And he was in my bedroom. I'm passed out on my bed. And he's like next <laughs> to me. And I puked everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Just red puke. And I'm borderline OCD, like clean freak. And I woke up the next morning, no remnants. I was so drunk. I puked. I cleaned everything up. You and was were perfectly a clean. magician. Living with you is awesome because... We would have parties. You, we would have parties that you weren't even involved in, <laughs> and I would wake up and the place was spotless. And I'm like, dude, you cleaned up after me. You're like, yeah, it was no big deal, man. So no, whatever, <laughs> you'll get me later. I'm like, I probably won't, but thanks. Yeah, <laughs> never had a roommate like that. Well, there was. I think that there is a fragrance that comes, an after party fragrance. Oh, I could, I'm as you were saying that I'm smelling it. It's like that sticky beer floor smell that I just couldn't handle. But there's something very satisfying uh, that you thought I was a nut, but I I do like cleaning up after parties. I like it. I think it's something about the memory of the night. Stacking solo cups is very satisfying to me. Dumping out half cups of margaritas or you dump it in the sink. I just love it. We are the opposite. I love cleaning before. But then after, like you're not feeling well, it's a hot mess. I like, like a pre-clean and a post-clean. Out on the floor. I'll go pre and post. Yeah, I like a setup. You know what the least favorite part of you? You're, you're good at the setup. I love a I setup and I love a breakdown. For me, I get caught off guard when you're an hour and fourteen minutes into the party and your setup gets fucked up. You got their cups stacked nice. You got the limes all cut beautiful. Mm. Canned beers in the fridge lined up. Labels facing out. It's a Ritz Carlton up in there. Yep. And then you got the first 10 people come and just screw it all up. And then you have a choice. You're like, are you going to reset this or are you going to let go? And you have to let go. We had some fun times. We lived, for those who don't know, we lived together in a five-bedroom, two-floor place in the East Village. And we had... A lot of social gatherings there and it was house parties are my favorite thing in the world i think that's like what got me into djing do you think there's an age where it's not cool anymore definitely i'm definitely past that age and i don't care okay so (laughs) is there an age where i had a moment before i moved out which was a whole other thing we did a ceremonial key exchange remember that oh my god that was sad when we moved out um the ceremonial passing of the keys we did it at a comedy show yeah. Where like we played the trumpets and I came up to the stage and gave you my house key. That was an emotional day. It was a very emotional day. There was a moment though in my 30s where I was playing beer pong at our house and there was a girl at the party and was like, what's your major? I'm like, I don't know if I could do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what's your major? It's like, what's your major? Be a sophomore at NYU. Oh God. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the one caveat is if like you're super famous, you can get away with like anything. Like if you're like P. Diddy having like a 50th birthday house party, so I need to get really famous so it's like still social. That's acceptable. true. I guess Otherwise, we were doing I'm just a degenerate. We were just doing uh college style parties like when we were deep like into our twenties and thirties, yeah. yeah. Where it's like, oh man, like <laughs> Bud Lights. Finding leftover kegs. Remember, uh, we had a friend who had a keg who didn't use it all, and we'd be like, oh, we got a leftover keg. Let's get it on ice and have people over. I'm like, I'm 33. Yeah. You know, we should be able to just buy a keg. Lots like when Pete Titty does it, he's not he's not using like those Gatorade water bottles and making punch no. and playing beer pong and getting noise complaints. Yeah, like celebrities performing and stuff. Oh man, <laughs> one of my favorite neighbor memories of all time Ooh, this is gonna be a good one you we were just talking about this throwing house parties as frequently frequently as frequently i'm an idiot frequent frequently as we did in new york you never have to worry about the police no. police are never going to get called for a house party it's not even a thought they have too many other things going it happened on. to be once the only thing you're going to get is side eyeballs eye rolls complaints from your neighbors and we would try to make a conscious effort that is 100 percent correct to make sure that the neighbors at least knew or were invited and for the most part we had a very good standing of that we threw a banger at the house middle of the party a neighbor comes banging on the door 
And we answer the door. And do you remember what the guy said? Was it the guy we were talking about this with, with, with who was yes. like with that girl? He knocks really, in the door. This was one of my favorite moments of a neighbor. Actually, but this was the best person that's ever entered a party before. Okay. Knocks on the door. What does he say? Guys, I'm sorry to be a bother. He's like kind of short, curly hair, <laughs> like very nerdy. We're like, oh, shit. It's like, is there any way you guys can turn the music up? <laughs> and the girl he was with was like, <laughs> and we're like, get in here. <laughs> Everyone come get have, in. Come have some chords. Dude, light. it was the best moment ever. Because I, you know he had to think about that on the way down the stairs. 100%. Is there any way you guys can turn the music Oh. Like these big glasses yeah. where you can see and his like, eyeballs. Come on so in. Like, this guy's definitely invited in. He's definitely invited. We need more neighbors like that. I know. Uh, they don't exist. I get noise complaints now for like completely different things. Like I play. You get noise complaints? Yeah, of course. Oh, you're in a co-op like me. Yeah. And the co-op is like. What what could I got you co-op. possibly get a noise complaint for? Dude, Are you having so... parties without me? That's not cool, bro. Definitely That's not having not parties cool. without you. I got a noise complaint. <laughs> For playing a recorder in my apartment. I was going to make fun of you, but I ordered a recorder on Amazon a few months ago. Dude, I was playing the recorder and trying to learn My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. That's the song we played in school. Celine Dion. Yeah, I remember the notes. You can learn it. Yeah. Na, 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 I was na, na. practicing that, and my doorman calls and goes, is everything okay up there? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, what's going on? And he goes, yeah, we just got a couple of noise complaints. They thought that someone was watching Titanic really loudly, or <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Uh, so I did get noise complaints from my recorder playing. Time? Time of day. Just, you know, your average 6 p.m., Oh, okay. That's, oh, that's dinner ridiculous. time recorder. It's, you live in Midtown Manhattan on a busy street. If this is like 3 a.m. and you're having no. a jam session. No, no. This is just like middle of the day playing the recorder. I did get one or two noise complaints for my Taste Funny show. What for Oh, when you do the virtual ones. Virtual shows. Well, those got a little like, ratchet sometimes. I could, I yeah, could see I'm, that. Yeah, because I'm just like <laughs> slamming beers and throwing shit on the ground and playing the yeah. recorder and eating crickets. And people are like, this guy's being tortured in this home. Or I don't know what. I don't, I'm sure they didn't envision what was actually happening in there. Mm -hmm. But those are the only times I got noise complaints from that like my doorman had a call. And I check. could see your virtual shows. Then I was like DJing, and then like there was like sound in the background. If I were to listen, I think you were being like sexually tortured, <laughs> like to one of those. I virtual was shows. being sexually tortured. Kind of. That you must have missed that episode. <laughs> I missed that one. Yeah, uh, we're looking at doing some traveling in August. I reached out to you because I would be looking at some different places. Yeah. And the, the places that we were looking at was Argentina, mm -hmm. which you've been. Yes. Brazil, which you've been, mm -hmm. both for girls, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you're like an international traveler when you're in a relationship. Like yeah. you, I feel like you date being like, eh, you know, I've never been to Turkey. Maybe I'll. <laughs> you're What's giving, your you're last giving name? me ideas now. Yeah, you like. That sounds nice. Yeah, you go, yeah, I know your name's Mary, but what's your last name? So you can like see where they're from. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, you did South American travel specifically for girls, but you have done. Other South American travel, not for girls. Like, you've done some not regular... For, no. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you still well, did it for girls, but... I went to see my ex-girlfriend in Argentina. She wasn't uh, your ex at in, the time. In, no. Um, in Buenos Aires, which is very nice, which I think you should go to. And then I went to Brazil, but that was also during the World Cup. So that was, like, a whole other experience. It was kind of both. We looked at Rio, uh, we looked at Rio with Rio, and I, I was... I did all the Googling based on like crime rates, which I don't suggest doing if you want to go to Brazil. Mm -hmm. If you look at the 50 most dangerous don't cities do it. in the world. You're going to freak yourself out and not go. I am <laughs> freaking myself out. It looks very beautiful, but then it's like, yeah, as long as you stay in the right neighborhood. And I don't speak Portuguese, so God, I could probably be talked into anything. And I'm extremely gullible. Mm -hmm. So it does make me nervous. Yeah. Because it's, it's the crime rates is not like you look at crime rates for some cities in Europe, for example, and it's like a lot of like pit pocketers. Lots of pickpockets. Pit pocketers. Pit pocketers. Oh, you might Europe get a pit times. pocket. If you thought you had 13 pounds, they might go and snag a couple pounds from you. Mm -hmm. But in Rio, they just straight kill you. They might. They it's might. the murder capital of South America. I told that to Rio. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of worried about the crime. She goes, no, there's nothing to worry about. But I've been punched in the face on the street. Well, you have street cred, which you have I to do. factor in. 
I was like, I've been mugged. I've been attacked. It's not sweet. I think after you get attacked, you think of things a little bit differently. You were, you were racially profiled for being Jewish. I was. And I'm not even Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, no, Rio is a, a beautiful city. It's a huge city. It's, like, very, very spread out. It takes, like, hours to get to either side. Um, it's I don't know how the population is, but it's definitely a, it's lot, a lot larger than New York. And the thing with, with Rio that's like sort of similar to the US is that there's a lot of very wealthy areas and then there's like, but they're like right next to the favelas. So in most, like for example, when I was, I went to Mexico Favela, City. Favelas is like a- like Kind of like slums. Slums, yeah. Yeah, and what's, I guess what you're right about is that like when I was in Mexico City last year, which is also like a diverse city, when you're in the nice areas, you feel very, very comfortable. Like I felt safer there, like when I was in Polanco, in these nice areas than like, pretty much anywhere else but in rio you can be in like these multi-million dollar areas and still have to like watch your stuff so it's still beautiful though i but you're not a big beach guy right so maybe bonus i, I, like, the the I, I like the beach i like i thought you said you're a pool guy <sighs> that's why i thought that's we're going guy. to orlando and not i am uh, kind of a pool guy i like the water in a few weeks i like the water god i am kind of a pool you scared guy. of sharks no, I just like the uh, heat and sand combination. To me, one of the worst feelings in the world, truthfully, is being hot, salty, and sandy. And the beach in the wrong time, wrong. You can have a beach day where you're, you're just, you know, when the the salt dries in your body and you put a t-shirt mm -hmm. on, and you feel like that feeling of dried salt on your body, and you're hot, and you haven't showered, and you got sand all over. You can never get the sand right. And then you have to get into the car and the sand gets in the car and you're hot. And I don't like Ooh, that feeling at all. Kill. I don't like buzz that. Kill. I don't. I don't like that. But you know what I do like? And this is going to sound like I'm a brat. But I do like beach with facilities. Like if you talk about a fancy a, hotel where they're Doesn't like, have to be fancy. Doesn't have to be fancy. Because you're a hotel guy. You're, all, you're all about the service. I like the service. I like an amenity or two. But if you're at the beach and they got like a shower by the beach and you can wash your little feet off, you know, they got towels there. You're next to your hotel room. You can shower off quickly. You maybe dive into the pool. That's the beach situation I like. But whenever someone's like, you want to go surfing at this off the beaten path thing and it's 90 degrees out? And no. <laughs> out. I'm out on that. I'm out on that. So did you make a decision? I don't think we're going to do Brazil on this one. No. No, I don't think so. We're looking at Turkey, which, you know, as an Armenian, we have a complicated relationship with Turkey. It's That's technically, true. it's not technically, it is where my ancestors were from, Istanbul, formerly Constantinople. So Correct. we do have a little bit of history there um, going back a long time. So there's a big part of me that's excited about this Turkey trip because I want to try to track down my grandmother's relatives. Which are my relatives. That'd be amazing. So you're part Turkish? No. But see, this is a good international study for you. But if you look at Turkey, the country as it is now with its borders, historically the borders have changed over thousands right. of years. Right, it was the Ottoman Empire. So it was Ottoman Empire before that. It's it, The Armenian land has shrunk, grown, shrunk over many millennia or not a millennia centuries yeah so parts of big swabs of what is now turkey used to be armenia okay and constantinople being the major city a lot of armenians lived there uh oh. now what you see is armenia is extremely small very very small one of the smallest countries on earth it is very 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 small and that's a whole other issue. I don't know the geopolitical reasoning for that I I, and I either. probably would blow it but for whatever it is Armenia is small, but lots of cultural, culturally identifying Armenians live in Turkey still. Okay. Relative to how many Armenians there are in the world. So there is the little part of Istanbul where my grandmother's family is from is, is still there. It's under a different name. So I want to stay in that little area, and I want to see if I can track down any Jigargians or Hunkyars. That's my, uh, my uh, other grandmother's like maiden You have name. relatives there? I have no idea. I doubt it. Probably not. But I'm going to be looking for it. It's on the top of my list. I've never been, but I'm dying to go to Turkey. Love to go. I'm a and uh, the food nerd, is so. the food looks great. 
and the weather there is great. They have a, I didn't have any idea. They got a whole seaside, seaside turkey. Yeah. It's not what they call it. Mediterranean. But Mediterranean is all up in there. Yeah. Izmir. And uh, they got beaches with facilities. Only with facilities. You gotta or have the facilities. You're going to get scared. You're going to need your floaties or something. I just need a facility, man. Either that or the pool. Well, what if, like, you're in the Caribbean, you're in Turks and Caicos, you're in, like, clear water, white sand, like, that's not enough of a vibe? Great vibe. I'm, I, I immediately, as you start painting that picture, I'm like, what's behind me? Is there a hotel back there? Do I have to drive to it? What's my towel situation? Anytime you bring a beach bag, the beach bag is just completely fucked. It's full of sand. It gets screwed up. I'm going to read a book by the beach. There's sand in the pages. You get water on the pages. You know, you bring two towels. All I need is two towels, and you don't. One gets too sandy. You can't use it immediately. When I thought of that Turks and Caicos thing, is is there a hotel by the beach? That's your first thought. My first thought. You're a freak. I'd be so happy to be there right now. <laughs> no, nah, I need the facilities. I think that's pretty common. You don't think that's common? I think there are some people that aren't beach people, but in general, the beach is my happy place. You don't like the beach? It's sand, it's heat, it's salt. Everything you just said is everything he says. Heat, sand, salt. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. You're with me? Okay, yeah. so, okay. But you we can handle the discomfort. You can di handle the discomfort. I mean, to be completely honest with you, I'm usually, like, relatively inebriated, so I don't care about these factors. Fair. <laughs> these are fair <laughs> points. These are all fair points. And there has been a lot of companies who try to go down the line of trying to make your beach stay a little bit more comfortable. They have, like, the safes that go underneath your... Uh, like sand safes that go underneath your sand towels. Safe. Yeah, it's like a little box that goes underneath your towel, so you put yourself in a little safe. They have sandless towels now that shake off and nothing I sticks to so it. I am so bad at keeping the sand off of the towel. It's something I, I struggle with very uh, greatly. Here's an idea I had. I don't even know if I want to give this. This is another multi-million dollar idea. Don't this say This show Tell is full show. of multi-million dollar ideas that no one likes. <laughs> Here's one that I thought would be great. The company is called Sunspots, and they'd be circle towels. Mark Cuban's listening. Mark Cuban, check this out. There aren't that many. There, I'm sure that someone's making a circle towel out there. But what happens when you go to the beach? You lay down your rectangle towel that everyone has, and then you're like, I got to line up the angle to the sun so you get, you get hit with the rays. This would be a big circle towel, so you can just change your body. You keep the towel in the same place. You just move your body with the sun. It's called a sunspot. You put it on the ground, and you just rotate your body so you always can get the right amount of so sun. So you're literally saying instead of a rectangular beach towel, a circle. Circle beach towel. And then what are most company logos? Circles. So now you have built-in sponsorships. You go out there. Hey, Coca-Cola, you want to be uh, sunspots? You can see the ad, right? Overhead uh, helicopter looking over the beach. You got Pepsi. You got Coke. Everything spotted on the sunspots on the beach. Hmm. I want maybe you guys put in the comments what you think. I, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I'm trying to visualize it. Sunspots. And, um, I would need to test it out. I would need to test you anchor down the towel and then you just move your body to the sun. You're always in the sun. You never have to readjust your towel. You know when you get a beach chair and you're like, I got to angle up to the sun? Never have to do that. Sunspot. That's not a bad idea, actually. Tom kind of likes it. Tom, do you like it? I'm trying. I can't decide <laughs> if I like it. Multi-million dollar idea. I'm a big beach idea. guy. I just, um, this is a lot to process. I have one. A sunspot? Well, it's a Heineken towel. But it's a circle? It's a circle. It's a circle. Someone stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sue them. <laughs> Heineken has stolen the sunspot. It's a good name. <sighs> Listen, some ideas I have, they're they're home runs, and then sometimes just people steal them. Yeah, that's what happens. I would have, I would, I would probably buy one. Here's another great idea. Multi-million dollar idea. You go to a restaurant, and then you leave, and you got stuff stuck in your teeth. What do you get? You get oh, food stuck in your teeth. Food stuck in your teeth. Common thing on the way out of a restaurant is what? A toothpick. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. A toothpick. You're coming out of a restaurant. Do restaurants wouldn't... have toothpicks? Are you kidding me? I don't think I've ever seen a toothpick in a restaurant. Where do you eat? I don't know. Obviously You've never not seen as a classy toothpick? spots as you. For toothpicks? Tooth... Re restaurants have toothpicks in them? You're fucking with me. You've I'm never not. seen a toothpick at a restaurant? I don't think so. What do you think I was talking about then? What was going to be your guess? I have no idea. So I said stuff stuck in your teeth, leaving a restaurant, and what were you thinking? I, my mind got... 
Never mind. Um, well, what do you think? What kind of amenities do you think restaurant have when you leave? They have like mints sometimes. Mints. What's next to the mints? Candies. Mints next to toothpicks. <laughs> I've never noticed this before. Am I what? like completely I, oblivious? I I think that's a shocking statement that is you've this never like seen. All restaurants like nice. Crappy. I'd say if I had to do a survey, I bet sixty nine percent of restaurants have toothpicks. Sixty nine percent of restaurants. Have and you're not going to get a toothpick at a McDonald's. But I'd say most restaurants have a toothpick. Well, now you just buzz killed my whole idea. Oh, crap. Well, every restaurant, the idea, do you want to hear the idea? Yeah. Okay. So most restaurants <laughs> on earth have toothpicks. But what if instead of toothpicks, you had disposable floss? Well, floss is disposable. Yes. But like, <laughs> you know the little floss picks that like are on the yeah. thing? You can buy packs of them, like a hundred of them. You have those individually wrapped on the exits, and the company is called Floss and Toss. Whoa. Coming soon from Sunspots. <laughs> Another Shark Tank idea. I have a conglomerate of multi-million dollar ideas. I'm telling you, if you go to a restaurant, if you go to like Cisco, who sells food to all these restaurants, and you say, hey, we got Floss and Toss, they're going to go, what's that? It's just a better way to get the food out of your teeth. Uh, doing it with uh, getting food out of your teeth with a toothpick is not environmentally safe. Well, don't, or they, friendly. don't they already have those things? Like they're shaped like dental floss, but they're exactly stick. yes. So they already exist. Them at a... Individually wrapped as floss and toss, and you sell them to restaurants. And it's a B two B business. We never sell to the consumer. It's just at the exit. And then when you leave the restaurant, you're like, oh, I'll grab a floss and toss. Could you imagine walking down the street and you're like, oh, I've flossed and tossed it. I'm into it. Multi-million dollar idea. Bring it to Shark Tank. You gotta have ideas that go to the masses. Mm -hmm. That's a multi-million dollar one. What happened to the Lazy Larry? Layover Larry. Layover Larry. In a nutshell. I like that idea. It didn't work. No. But I designed a pillow, a better pillow, plain pillow. And it was called Layover Larry. And I made Tell prototypes. I made I, prototypes. I, I had this idea that like the 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 cushions, the head seat cushions that you get at the airport are no good. So this was like more of like a neck support. So you put it next to your neck and it keeps your neck angled straight and you could sleep easier. I think the idea was good, but the product was not good. Mm. It didn't end up working. I made prototypes in China. Maybe I should give those away. I'll take one. I might have thrown them away during COVID. <laughs> when I moved in with Rhea, there was a lot of things that storage was not going to. Storage is always an issue in New York. Yep. So having like. I think you gave me some like random things. I'm, I probably gave you a layover, Larry. Because I had like 45 of them. I always feel very pompous when I'm like on the train or the uh, or the plane with like a, like a big pillow. But not that I really care. But. Layover, Larry was a good idea. Uh, it had like little grips on the back. So it would stick to the seat a little bit better and it kind of arched around your neck and good idea. Never really got the execution. Mm. And now I think there's a better idea. The best idea I've seen for sleeping on a plane, which was, I literally had this idea. It's called sunspots. I had this idea. It wasn't that I had this idea. Um, a few years ago, I couldn't actuate it as a plan and I never made a prototype, but someone actually did it and it's a great idea. You attach, it's a sleep mask, right? It looks like a sleep mask and it attaches to the back of the seat. So the biggest problem with sleeping on a plane is that you have neck flop. Your neck flops down and that's the biggest neck issue. Neck flop is a big problem. So this thing attaches to the back of the seat, right? And it goes to the back of the seat rest and then it's a... On the front of it, it's like a sleeping mask. So as you start to lean forward for neck flop, it pull it the it has pressure against your face and keeps your head straight, like you're tied into the seat. You're, okay. It keeps your head straight up. So it's imagine a sleep mask, but instead of like going around your head, it goes to the back of the seat. So like as you want to go forward, it doesn't allow you to do that. So, so your head sleep, is like stuck to the seat, kind of. Yes, and and. It, it works really well. Hmm. So that was like a an invention that I was like, ah, man, that should have been Layover Larry. Kind of weird, though, won't you? 
What? Wouldn't it like look kind of weird? No, it just looks Not like a sleep mask. It just looks like it's a like sleep tied mask. tied to the back of the seat. If you've seen some, what some people do on planes, you this is like the easiest thing. Most people wear Fair. a sleep mask. You, you remember that thing in the Delta Sky Mall? I used to love the Sky Mall. But there was one that you blew up, which would be really funny. And they always had the example of some guy in the middle seat. And you blow up this thing and it goes on the food tray. You like lower the food tray. You blew up this thing. And, and, <laughs> and you, you just stuck plop your, your head down. You stick oh, your head into it. I want it. that. Send me the link after this i was like cease and desist i do i can uh, never do this that is amazing can never so you do this. literally just plop your head on the food tray which people do but just a little more comfortable but yeah it's like in this in this blow up like inflatable pool thing <laughs> which is so funny i love that i want to invest in that uh and then there's been some other ones where like you wrap a scarf looking thing that has tension in it around your neck and it like kind of supports your head so like there is some solutions out well, there what have you like ultimately decided on because you travel more than anyone I know. You're on a plane. Well, you have some time off this summer, which is great. We can hang out. But you travel all the time, like all over the country, like to big cities, small cities. So these things must cross your mind a lot. I mean, you're on planes like eight or nine hours a week, sometimes I'm, more. Listen, the, most of the time what I'm thinking about is multi-million dollar ideas. And I have a whole bunch of them. I did a whole episode on fun funerals. I'm sorry, what? Fun funerals. That's another On this big show? idea. I missed that one. On big fun idea. funerals? Fun funerals. Fun funerals. If you look at... Can I get the synopsis? I, I sure, I'll give you a little brief this. because it clearly did not take off yet. <laughs> but, I didn't see it go viral on uh, Instagram. Okay, yet. so you know basically what Top Golf did to the driving range, which was they took a mundane golf activity that was for older folks or like avid golfers, and they brought it and they made it more fun for the masses. Yeah. Same thing with bowling alleys. Bowling alleys were for a certain type of person for a long time, and then they made them more fun with music and disco nights and all that stuff. So they have these things that are uh, like old school f activities that have been modernized and made fun. The one thing on earth that everyone with 100% certainty will have is a funeral unless you know someone who's lived forever. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that is consistent is that they all are boring. So I'm well, saying, I mean, they're what not if supposed you go, to be like, what if you go to a funeral and you had a choice? I'm not saying that this is every funeral house, but like, you know, you're making arrangements for yourself. You have a choice. You're like, I want to go to Jiggy's fun house, whatever it's called. Jiggy's funeral parlor. And why would you go there? Because, yeah, you have a service and you get to mourn and stuff. But what's that in the back? A driving range. <laughs> Miniature golf. Great food and beverage. The food's never good. The place always looks like it's from the 70s. Fun funeral homes would be updated. Great sound system. Book a DJ. That could be another source be, of income. It could be a great source of income. I have yet to do a funeral. You go to the restaurant in the back, be like, oh my God, I didn't know Bobby Flay has a restaurant back here. Uh, DJ PJ spitting. The, you have after great the wake. food. <laughs> yeah, you great food and beverage, great drinks, curated drinks, a Bobby Flay restaurant, activities in the back, banging balls, hitting the driving range, maybe miniature golf. Who knows? Hmm. And then you get to mourn and you get to know that the person who died made a choice to have a fun funeral. That's a billion dollar idea. In the will. In every city, just... every city doesn't need 20 of these, you just need one. Mm -hmm. To someone to make a choice because everyone's talked about I don't want anyone to mourn at my funeral I want it to be a celebration of my life that's the person I want the fun funeral house and I think there's big money in it you could charge a super premium for a fun funeral mm -hmm. I'd be the first client well, funerals are already expensive so yeah and it's for the person who wants to have a who wants their people instead of mourning to have a fun time they go to the fun funeral place and no one's doing this. And I'm not even talking about like no one's doing it. And there's something a little bit adjacent, like my toothpick idea. Mm -hmm. There's no one even touching this market. That is true. You would have, I guess, a monopoly on the fun funeral. But can't you imagine some people like 40 years from now be like, I can't believe no one thought before well, Jiggy's fun funeral home. Half of me thinks you're insane. Half of me thinks you're onto something because... I'm Catholic, not very religious, but Catholic funerals tend to be very sad. Everyone's crying. Catholic people are very emotional. Um, but my 
aunt is a, what is, she's like a converted to Buddhism. And it was like very, like when, when I went to hers, it was like very positive and it was, she's like, no one was crying because it was very uplifting in a way. And I was like, wait, I'm not actually sad. Yeah. Because it was like, that was just the vibe of it. Well, you're going to have all the different, uh, you know, we observe all the different religions at the, at the home, but we just bring in great tech. Mm hmm. You know, so you have a great sound and light package. If you want to do a video, I got a team to do that. You are sick. Yeah. So like after the you funeral, a video wall comes this up with smoke man. effects. There's a smoke effect. There's like haze, like the, oh, the there'd be haze that comes up and you'd be like, you know, everyone's mourning. They do all the speeches and then the lights kind of flicker and then a spotlight comes down and fog effects like a Halloween. And then I come out like with like a DJ booth oh, and, and then it rises it's like, out. Yeah, it's like, and a big video wall comes and it's you. <laughs> yeah, what's up everybody? I'm not here no more. But you know what is here? Chicken wings <laughs> supplied bam, bam, by bam, Bobby bam. Flay. Bobby Flay, that motherfucker's making wings right now. I might not be here, but we got wings. We got drinks, two for one at the bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Open bar. Open bar. Well, you might not have to do open bar. You could do whatever you want. You could do, but it depends on the drink package. True. You could do a two for one. You thought about this. Yeah. You could have, <laughs> could you imagine you go to the bar and like the drink is named after you? Like, yeah, I'll take two DJ PJs. Hmm. I'm into this. It's a fun idea. You've converted me. So, I mean, that's one that's of, how I want to go. one of my many, uh, one of my many ideas. The other one I've done on this show is an airline, a plus size airline. How do you think of this stuff? Delta like, XL. Not that I disagree with you, but like, how is this what's going through your mind? Like, oh, got to plan the show in Orlando. Know oh, why that happens the show to the me? Moxie. Know why I Plus think about that? Airline. Because I've sat next to people and I'm like, this guy should be in another airline. There should be Delta XL where everyone has a little bit more room. You might have to pay a little bit more of a premium, but why do you have a big and tall shop That'd for be like clothes? a little bit dis Discriminatory? No, like... they make the they they what they're gonna discriminate against themselves. I don't know. They book the ticket. It's just someone who can't fit in a regular size seat. Don't what did you I know people, for example, who are really super tall. Don't they just have to book first class and suck it up or No. Or is that fair to them? I guess isn't that discriminatory? I'm mm. saying if you're six foot seven, I know some my, my friend Michael, six foot seven, and he has to get a regular economy seat. That's rough. He should have Delta XL. There should be a plane for people who are like over six feet or want some extra space. It's all kind of like first class ish, but you don't get first class services. It's an economy, but you just get more space. It's Delta XL. So everyone there is plus size. <laughs> plus size, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Why could you have a why can you have a big and tall shop? Is that discriminatory? I, I guess not. It's selection in the marketplace. How do these things like cross your mind? I mean, I, I have some weird things. Don't get me wrong. Like my fake soccer. You gotta thing, but... look at the market and try to make it happen. You're an entrepreneur. Delta plus size. Okay. No, I wouldn't call it Delta plus size. I'd call it Delta XL. <laughs> it's all the services you want from Delta. Yeah. But more. You're all about the service. Like you wanted to do the. Uh, the high-end Ritz Carlton Hospital. Yes. You're all about the hospitality and the, uh, hospitality the treatment experience. of people. Treatment of people, mm -hmm. floss and toss, sunspots. These are all big, big, big Party ideas. funerals. Party funerals. I don't know. I don't have a name for the funeral business yet. Um, I also don't have any investors. No. But all you need is one prototype. I think it's so elementary and basic. It, I think a lightning bolt would hit someone if I went to like Damon John with that idea. I think the pitch would be pretty easy. For which one? Fun funerals. I really think that they would be like, yeah. Sharks. I think I'm I looking get... for 10% for $300,000. Sharks. Are you willing to die on this hill? <laughs> <laughs> I do think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I think you need one prototype and that's it. You're good to go. You need one city and all you need is like 0.01% of the population to be like, yeah, this thing sounds great. And honestly, once you went to a few fun funerals, I think it would spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Who would go to a fun funeral and then come back and not be like, I definitely want to have a fun funeral too. If one of your friends passed away or family members and you went and it was a fucking blast, <laughs> why would you ever go to the mundane? The funeral business has not been changed in a hundred years. Why would you That's ever true. go back 
to a place that looks like an old grandmother's house, smells yeah. bad. You old know, old flowers. Old flowers. The vibe sucks. It's drab. You come to the fun funeral place, you're like, this place rocks. And the chicken wings by Bobby Flay. Fog machines. Fog machines. It's all there. I think, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about? The, <laughs> so when we were looking into Turkey, it's so funny because I think a lot of people are going to think I'm going to Turkey to get hair plugs. To get what? Hair plugs. Huh? They do the most hair surgeries in Turkey. Hair surgeries. Hair surgeries. So when you get hair plugs in America. What's a hair a, plug? Hair plug. They take a hair from your head and they plug it in the front if you're going oh. bald. And Turkey does the most of them. Why is that not more ubiquitous? Because I feel like it's surgical. It's expensive. Uh, they call it hair grafts. So you're taking hair from one place, moving it to another. It's expensive in America, but in Turkey they do it at like a fraction of the price. It's like how girls go to like Colombia to get like BBLs and stuff. This is What's like that? Brazilian butt lift. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I've never heard a of that. Butt lift. A Brazilian butt lift in Colombia. Or Does that even make sense? In Brazil or Colombia and like surgery or like fake tits or stuff like that. But what's a Brazilian butt lift? They just make your ass look nicer surgically. That can't hold up. And but isn't it's that... very common apparently. Really? A Brazilian butt lift? You never heard of that? No. Are you serious? You didn't know what a toothpick was. <laughs> Well, you don't know what a BBL is, so ha. Huh. But is booby is boobies <laughs> is BBLs a real thing? Yes. It's very common. But you would know if I was walking down the street and be like, oh, that girl has a BBL. Well, that's you would know? we were when I was in Miami with some friends, we were debating. Like Oh, BBL or not? Yes. I would never be able to guess that. Would you be able to guess that? I've i um, if you saw butt implants. Some people I are tell. very good at telling. Um not as good, but yeah, BBL. they they raise they just I don't know. I, I don't know a lot about lift. the medicine behind it. They but make they your inject, ass look nicer. They inject you with Brazil? I think yeah, they inject you with some Brazil, yeah. I think they, I might need like a Google fact check on this, but I think they like take fat from other parts in your body and like put it in your butt and make it like look more shapely. Robust. Yeah, more hourglass. Kardashian. Kardashian. Well, Kardashian's more, got a BBL. It has to be. I mean, to be. I mean, I, 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 like Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, they all have to have BBLs. Like, it's but like you don't know for sure. Ninety nine point nine percent. But guys aren't getting BBLs. You know what? The guys, the well, guys are not getting. <laughs> no, but you know what? The surgery that no, guys get no. that always surprises me uh, is uh, calf implants. Calf implants. I don't think that that pays off. I don't. I've Who never heard is a girl doing a calf implant. Do you think a girl would ever be impressed by like, that guy? Face not the best. Calves. I'm digging it. <laughs> that must he be like a have... Miami thing or something, because we can only shark calves off like three, three months, months a year, year, maybe. I was anti-short. I was anti-short for a long time. Anti-what? Short. Shorts. Oh, never I remember. Short. Yeah, never wore shorts. I don't like shorts. Um, I thought that it was... You have the most random like pet peeves. Yeah. Like beach and shorts. <laughs> shorts I was against because as an entertainer, I think it's unbecoming as a, of an entertainer to show your too, legs. Oh, think about. Give me an example. But there's only one comedian, Fluffy. But there's no examples in entertainment where a man wears shorts. Like, would you think that like Michael Jackson wore shorts? I don't know. Never. Frank Sinatra performing in what shorts. What if it's like 95 degrees out? Doesn't matter. Think. Give me an example. Maybe when they're performing? I'm saying as an entertainer, you'd like never while you're on stage. Yeah. But then off stage too. I guess that's maybe For men, I mean Sometimes you might see Leonardo DiCaprio wear a short. I've never thought about that. No shorts. So I had this thing where I wouldn't wear shorts. You for always a while. wear pants, yeah. Always Even pants. when it's like ninety seven degrees out. Pants. Entertainer. Never gonna see my kneecaps. The only person who sees my kneecaps is my wife. <laughs> I even wear pants in bed. <laughs> you should get a BBL. BBLs, I would never. I, I would have no interest. No, it's only for. I'm kidding. It's only. It's only for girls. I mean, generally, they're very, very common. Though we were like, one of my friends was like, fifty percent of the girls here in Miami have them. BBLs. I, like, I, I don't think it was that high, but fifty percent, dude, of the women in Miami, that'd be my buddy. He was like tens Yo. of millions of BBLs. No, but like you while we're on the beach. Uh, well, that could be true, but you have to go full tail. You can't just get one cheek. You got to have both cheeks. Well, obviously, you don't well, get I don't one want... cheek, you f 
shake. What if Can you, you can't afford it? Like one great like ass shake. And the but other it, one's when you're doing like... hair transplants, sometimes you get you can't afford the whole graft. You know, so you get like some <laughs> plugs. But you can't get like. Can I, is, cheek, is there a plan where I could do one cheek now, one cheek later? Oh, yeah, do put a down payment for the other cheek. Yeah, yeah you're you're always like walking sideways. Um, yeah, you got to go. You have to go full, double cheeks. Well, obviously you got to go double cheeks, bro. <laughs> could you imagine? I'm just saying. One, sometimes like, perfect. Well, if you did a payment plan, I guess they're not holding back a cheek. Yeah, that'd you be can still rough. do a payment plan, but they give you full cheeks. That would be really rough if you could only afford one. I mean, there's got to be some people who just be like, can you do one cheek now, one cheek later? What if you had a lot of time on your hands? What if you're like, I'm not leaving the house for a minute. Can you do one cheek now, one cheek later? Do you think they would even that would entertain that? That would not be very erotic. IMO. <laughs> What's IMO? In my opinion. Oh. BBL. Yeah. Brazilian butt list. But 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 Brazilian lift. butt lift. They're very common. Well, you threw me off initially because you said you go down to Colombia for a Brazilian butt lift. That was true. That was true. But I guess in South America, it's just like how we were talking about you going to Turkey or like whatever. It's it's cheaper to do surgeries in other places. People well, it's interesting because we are most likely going to go to Turkey. And I do think that most people are going to think that I'm going to get hair plugs. Like any time that I a man no idea says that, Turkey that, was known for that. massive. Why massive. Turkey? Are Turkish people bald? They just do. They I don't know if they have this more people doing the procedure, but there are some memes going around of late and TikToks where like in the back of a plane coming from Turkey, where everyone is bandaged up on their heads <laughs> because they all got the hair transplant. Is that like? They like knock you out and everything. It's like a whole big thing, I assume. Um, I've done thousands of hours of research on it, and um, <laughs> I will say, <laughs> yeah, I haven't looked into it that much. I mean, two thousand hours of research. I did look into a company reached out to me to see if I would be a spokesman for a hair transplant, and they were going to give oh. me one for free. Oh, but the contract. How much do those cost? Ten thousand dollars. Ten grand. Yeah. So they were gonna wow. give one to me for free, but the contract read that I had no discretion of where my image was used for like a long time. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I, initially, oh. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I was really gung ho. My mantra in everything in life is like, I give everything a hundred and ten percent and let the negatives come out naturally. That's like my mantra of everything. I rarely That's say no. A good way to say 110 percent. I let the negatives come out naturally. It's something I learned from my dad. So this guy reaches out about the hair transplant, and my gut reaction, I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start talking about it. He just, how did he like find you? He came people, to a show. I swear um, to God, I did a show. You, like in the crazy I did a show in Charlotte, big show, three, two, three thousand people at the show. Girl reaches out, hey, I'm a nurse at a hair transplant place. I know you talked about losing your hair on stage. We'd love to talk to you about it. Guy from the office hits me up, the doctor. He's like, we'd love to see if you'd like to be a spokesman for us. We'll give you the transplant. And uh, all you have to do is sign up to be the spokesman for X amount of years. I think it was like five years or 10 years. And then I read the deal and it was like billboards, Facebook ads, like canvassing the so landscape. your face would be everywhere. Everywhere. In exchange for a free hair transplant. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I could do it. I have no discretion of where it's used. I could be in a TV ad. I could have been on a Facebook ad, a billboard, a newspaper, everything. They can use my name, picture, everything. So I could just like go on Facebook, seeing my aunt like arguing about politics, and I see your face pop up yes. like, yes. Look at my hair. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I thought if so it you was said like no, ultimately, obviously, I said no, ultimately. How does that like? Does if you do that, does the hair it just like? stays but it's then like, like what happens your hair tree. grows and then like the problem with hair transplants that i've always found is that you're constantly chasing your hairline because like you don't stop losing your hair so even if they fully back in and fill in all your hair you're still going to continue to lose mm -hmm. so then you have to keep on going back and they have to keep filling it you might if you pay attention you'll see guys in the street with like great frontal region but then like a it was like a line in the sand oh no nothing and then they just kept losing and maybe just ran out of money to keep doing surgeries so you'd have to keep going with it to keep or doing it kind of weird and so i was like i don't know if i want to do that oh Plus, I, I, it rarely looks natural. The guys who who do it, there's actually a lot of guys in comedy who do it. Like LeBron James, you think he? No, I actually don't think he does. Eh, no? Maybe he does. But there's a bunch of guys in comedy, like big name guys who do it. 
And uh, it's guys who have like a little bit of thinning where they fill it in so it's like not noticeable. But if you're like all the way gone, like, you know, you're not going to show up one day and just have like a full head of hair. I'm not going to come back. And It'd be a like, little bizarre. Yeah. People would be like, what's up? I wouldn't do that. Like you can do a BBL subtly, but you can't just like be completely bald and just like, no, oh, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, can't do it. Hmm. So we'll see. But I will say I thank you for your advice on the trip because it really helps steer the way. But you're going to Turkey. Yeah, I took your advice. I, t I told you to go to Buenos Aires. <laughs> no, you, but you did say that you, like Turkey was always a place that you wanted to go. And I've really, always wanted to go really, too. Really and like, I go. feel like Buenos Aires is great. I'm sure it would be great. I just think that if I'm going to do uh, a trip before but we start family. But you were just in, and, I mean, different country, but like you were just in the Middle East, like relatively. You were in Jordan. Jordan, but that's very different. Like, yeah, it's very different. Very different. That's just so off the beaten path. I, I really you. think that I'm being steered to Turkey for some like connection with my past. Plus, I love the food. I do you, love all the food. And you might get the hair surgery. <laughs> if I come back and I look like Tom Selleck, you're going to know that something happened. Like, Jiggy, something's different about you. Oh, really? Um, I don't think I'm... I would never do a hair surgery. You know what I would do, ironically? I would much rather a BBL and also a uh, wig. What? Like the one where they shave your head down and give you a toupee. I would do that. What? Because it's temporary. A wig? A temporary toupee. <laughs> they glue it on your head. Because if if you Bro. look ridiculous, you can just you okay? take it off. <laughs> you just take it off. It's not it's not surgical. You shave your head and you wear a wig. Yeah, it's called a toupee. Toothpicks, toupee. You've learned a lot on this. I'm show. learning. I'm learning. Um hmm. so it's gonna be fun. We'll obviously have you back. You're like our most regular guest, obviously. Nice. So uh, when we get back from Turkey, I think that's gonna be the trip. I'll give you the full recap. And, uh, yeah. Get in touch with your roots. I will get in touch with my roots. Very excited. Uh, where can people find you? Talk right into that one. Oh, uh, Instagram at DJPJAYY. Holler at me. Hopefully one of these videos will be on there. So you can catch me there. Same on Facebook. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys when you're back from Turkey. Get into some trouble from yeah, me. Yeah, we will. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Fresh Towels. Uh, thank you to Tom for producing. We have Beth and Tim in studio. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, until next time, mahalo and deuces.